Oh, boy, you got to love high school football. Is there anything better than high school football in Upper East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia? I don't think so. PJ nailed it on the head there. That's why we were so excited to launch our first season of Friday Night Rivals, showcasing 10 live high school football games across Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. It's something that had never been done before in the Tri-Cities, and the support we got from the schools, coaches, players, sponsors, and our community made it a terrific first season. Over the next hour, we're going to look back at all 10 games we did this year on Friday Night Rivals. Before we take a look at the games, let's go inside the numbers on the first season of Friday Night Rivals. In our 10 games, we had 10 different winners. Some schools had a chance to win two champions trophies, but nobody was able to pull it off. Home field advantage was very much alive and well on FNR. The home team won 80% of the games. Only Greenville and Chilhowee were able to win on the road. Four games were decided by one possession, and we ended the season on a high note. Our last three games literally came down to the last play of the game. The closest game we did on Friday Night Rivals was Elizabethan beating Greenville 24-21. And how about the most points scored on Friday Night Rivals this year was 62 by David Crockett. Our Friday Night Rivals season began in Kingsport back on August 23rd when Dobbins Bennett hosted Tennessee High. Going into that game, there were questions about how would Dobbins Bennett bounce back from a losing season, and they answered that question in a hurry against the Tennessee High team that only lost one regular season game, and it was that opener at Dobbins Bennett. Roll out. He'll throw it. He's got a receiver. It's Jaden That's Keller. Jaden Keller. Keller is a speedster down the right sidelines. Breaks a tackle. He's got nowhere to go but pick him up and put him down. And that's what he's going to do. Touchdown, Tennessee High. 84-yard touchdown for the Vikings on third and six. What a throw by McBrayer. He was getting chased. He finds Jaden Keller. McBrayer has pressure in his face right away. Does a great job escaping. And that is a beautiful throw on the run to Keller. And he is absolutely going to... Outrun everybody, 84 yards, PJ, for the touchdown. That's a big play, big play for the Vikings on third and six. To the 15, Dobbins Ben's going to get good field position out of this. And they've got a man wide open down the left sideline. It's all about speed now. And there he goes. That's Dalton Harkle Road picking him up and putting him down for a touchdown for the Indians. Oh, that's incredible. What an answer, Casey. Here we go. Whitson in the backfield, dropping straight back. He's going to flare it up to the right. He's got a receiver out there, and it is complete. That is Sensabaugh for the touchdown over the middle. 40-yard touchdown. What a play. What a catch. What a throw. Whitson, plenty of time. Good pocket. Nice, strong throw. And right open. Looks he's fake. open. And he's got that speedster out there again. It's Keller. Pick him up and put him down. Nobody's going to catch this kid. 20-10. Touchdown, Vikings. High snap, but he corrals it. Armitage breaks a tackle, stumbles, and scores a touchdown as he picks him up and puts him down for six more points for the Indians. That's the ball game. That is the ball game, and Davis Bennett walks away tonight with a 33-13 win over the Tennessee High Vikings. Up next, we're going to look back at David Crockett's impressive win over Science Hill, and then we'll head to Bristol, Virginia, for a battle between Virginia High and John Battle. You're watching Friday Night Rivals Rewind. Science Hill and David Crockett renewed their rivalry for the first time since 2014, and the scoreboard operator was very busy on the night of August 30th in Jonesboro. The two teams combined for 96 points, but 62 of those points belonged to the home team as David Crockett made an early season statement. First and 27 now for David Crockett. Larkins, big rush again, but Larkins rolls. He's going to throw it up, and there is... Collie, Collie makes a reception, and he is in for the touchdown. Bar number 12, just reading the quarterback's eyes and undercuts the receiver, and then does a great job taking it back the other way and watch him cut back across field and batch out, or he <laughs> fell. Feel bad for the quarterback on that one, trying to stop the DB going at him, and 75-yard touchdown for David Crockett. What a momentum swing there for the Pioneers. That looked like our technical crew devouring those burritos. Here's Thomas with the screen. He's got a block, and now it's all Thomas. He's going to pick him up and put him gone. He is gone for a touchdown. The screenplay developed. Everybody coming. There was nobody for David Crockett. Just had one man to beat right here, and no one's going to catch Chris Thomas. He goes 65 yards for the touchdown. And Larkins with the fake. He'll step up. He'll throw it deep. 
And this ball is going to be complete as Colley cut in front of it, and he picks him up and cuts him down for a touchdown. For Larkins, he takes a big hit on this one as well, and a couple toppers almost overrun the ball right there. He splits him. He yeah. splits him. Colley got the ball skills that he has. Unbelievable there. 55-yard touchdown. That is his third receiving touchdown of the first half. Steps, he throws to the corner. The ball is up. There's the leaping grab and a touchdown. Solomon Dunn. What a throw and catch. Our Toyota replay. Great throw. Little back shoulder throw there by, and what a catch by Dunn. Those gold shoes. Three receivers to his right. He hands again to Jordan again, and Jordan's got a lane on the left side. It's a foot race. Jordan puts on a move. He'll go down the left side, and there he goes. Touchdown, Crockett. Larkins, straight back. Now he dances. Now he's going to come up, and there he jump passes. He's got a man open, and that is a touchdown. They've scored a touchdown as Larkins makes a great throw. Good job by Larkins. Again, there's pressure. He steps up in the pocket, always looking downfield, and makes a great throw on the run to Britton, who gets behind the defense for the 31-yard touchdown. What a performance by what a performance. David Crockett. 62 points they put up tonight. 62 to 34. That's your final. Our first Friday Night Rivals game in Southwest Virginia pitted two teams that know each other very, very well. Virginia High made the short trip up the Battle Hill to take on their rivals from John Battle. Here comes John Battle as they come out here for the home, first home game of the year for the Trojans. Bearcats back on offense for a second time. There's Delaney with a good block, and Delaney's down the right side. Delaney's got some room to run. He's got one man to beat. That man is out of here. Delaney scores, and the Bearcats are on the board. 67-yard touchdown run by a Johnny Delaney. By this point, Delaney already hit, cut it outside and outruns everybody. 67 yards for the touchdown. He's dropping back to throw. Now he's going to roll to his left. He's got a man out there. And a great trembling catch there by John Battle. So look at this replay again here. Wolfer kind of lined up in the H-back position there. And who needs two hands? Just one hand and oh, brings man. it in for a gain of five yards. That's Cunningham behind Osborne. That's Cunningham cutting up on the inside. Now he's going outside, and he's going to dive in. Look at him. Boom. Slops on the dime. Cuts it outside. Breaks a couple foot tackles, and he's in for the touchdown. Great effort by Dylan Cunningham for the John Battle touchdown. Straight handoff. Cunningham. Cunningham met by Virginia High. I think Gage Richard has the ball. And he's fumbled again. Oh, my goodness. They fumbled right back to him. Richard just ripped it out of his hands. Keep an eye on number 12 for Virginia High, Richard. He just rips the ball out right oh, there. right takes there. It away yeah. from him. Takes it away. The ball never hit the ground. On second and long. Going to put it up. And he's hit by the battle defense. Thomas is going to keep it on the right side. He's got some blockers. He's got some room. But he's going to be almost to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, he is back to the original line of scrimmage. And John Battle has the football. Coach Ricker, how about his first home game mm -hmm. as head coach? And that he could be 1-0 against Virginia High. It's a pretty good life. And John Battle High School is going absolutely crazy. Look at Walker Osborne right there. He is fired up. Got the bandana and everything. Hugs for everybody in Trojan land. John Battle wins 12-7 over Virginia High. Up next, we're going to get our first look at Greenville as the Green Devils head to Science Hill Plus. One of the best atmospheres we experienced all season was the Battle of Hawkins County. We're going to head to Rogersville next on Friday Night Rivals Rewind. Welcome back to our Friday Night Rivals Rewind. Our fourth game of the season was our first look at Greenville, the two-time defending 4A state champs. The Green Devils lost their opener at Powell, and they fell behind early to the toppers before pulling off a big comeback. I see Drew Gregg here just eyeing down his receiver the whole time, and Copenhaver comes from the other side, cuts right underneath, and makes the interception. There it is in the air, and it's another pass up there for a... Uh... They did call a touchdown for number 21. That's Andrew Candidate. That's Thomas to his left. He fakes to Thomas, throws out again to another open receiver. 
who breaks in and scores a touchdown for the toppers. Anderson catches it out at the 15, and then three Green Devils miss uh. on a tackle. And Science Hill up 20 to nothing over Greenville. Looks like he hands off up the middle. That's Gudger again. He's going down the right side. He's got plenty of speed. He's got two people to beat, and no one is going to. That man is gone. He's out of here. What a run, Casey. 80 yards for Mason Gudger. That is exactly what Greenville needed. Ferguson looking left, throwing left. He's got his man out there. That's Stewart. Stewart runs in the end zone for a touchdown, and the Devils are back in this game. Takes a handoff now to Gudger. Gudger cuts back to the right, and he's got another touchdown. That man is out of here, and Greenville is back in this football game. There's Ty Youngblood. Busted his way for another first down. He refuses to go down, and he's going to score a touchdown. What a run by Youngblood. Youngblood, when he gets hit for the first time, almost seems like some of the guys kind of ease up, like, oh, he's coming down, and then, nope, there he goes. By that point, it was too late. 37-yard touchdown. Greenville up by nine points. Green Devils are all excited on their sidelines. Their fans have realized the clock is going to run out. And the final score is going to be Greenville 33 and the Toppers 24. This year is my first opportunity to experience the Battle of Hawkins County. Let me tell you, if you've never been to a game between Volunteer and Cherokee, do yourself a favor and put that on your to-do list. The atmosphere was off the charts. The community pride was on full display when Friday Night Rivals pulled into the Big Red Valley on September 20th. And welcome everyone to Toyota's Friday Night Rivals, powered by your East Tennessee Toyota dealers. I'm PJ Johnson, the voice of Friday Night Rivals, along with sports director Casey Getz. And Casey, we're here in the Big Red Valley for Cherokee and Volunteer, a rivalry that goes back 40 years. Not a seat to be found here in the stands. A beautiful night for high school football. Volunteer to the air. He'll be slinging it, and it's down there complete to Andrew Sounders. Volunteers offensive line has done a pretty good job. Let's see if they can get a yard here and get the Falcons on the scoreboard. It's going to be Barrett pushing that big frame over into the end zone for a touchdown. And Volunteer is back in this game. I think somebody with Trent in their name will score this touchdown here. <laughs> It's going to be Colin Trent following for another touchdown by the Chiefs as Trent kept it. Colin Trent faked it as Casey predicted to Trent Price and then just followed his tail back in. Trent straight drop back. Now he's got a big rush. He breaks a tackle. He's got some running room, but he's going to loft it up, and he's got a receiver out there, a diving catch. Is that made? They're saying yes. Hurry up here. You see Trent directing traffic, and he finds... Trent Price laying oh, out. He did catch. What? Barking out some signals. He'll hand to Trent Price, who gets a hold, goes through the middle, cuts back on the right side to the 15, the 10, the 5. He is in for the touchdown. And Cherokee has scored. Cherokee hands it off to Price, and he goes up the middle for another touchdown. Trent Price. Trudent section loves that. And now it's 41 to 6, and the fireworks are going off here at the Big Red Valley as the Chiefs are well on their way to the 12th straight win over Volunteer. Your final score, Cherokee 49 and Volunteer 6. One of the coolest things about Friday Night Rivals was the Sky 5 drone powered by Empire Ford. Up next, we have the best of the best from Sky 5. One of the best things about our Friday Night Rivals coverage was our Sky 5 drone. Meteorologist Ricky Matthews and photographer Keith Roberts flew Sky 5 all season long, except in the Musket Bowl because it rained that entire game. Here's a look at some of the best Sky 5 shots from our Friday Night Rivals season. A one-of-a-kind view of high school football in East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. Shot from high above by the exclusive Sky 5 drone, powered by Empire Force.
How cool is that? Well, Patrick Henry was the top team in Class 1 from Southwest Virginia this year. The Rebels were 13-0 before losing to Galax in the state semifinals. Back on September 27th, the Rebels welcomed John Battle to town. The Trojans hung with the Rebels for a half, but then Patrick Henry kicked things into overdrive. Interesting, Zach Brown lined up at wide receiver on this first play here. Yeah. Double reverse, and Brown's going to end up with it. He's got a blocker ahead of him. Brown's down the left sidelines. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. Pick him up and put him down. Touchdown for Patrick Henry on the first play from scrimmage. Scarborough. He's going to put it up in the air, and he has a receiver who makes a diving catch. Again, it's our boy McLeod out there. Scarborough off left side. That's Burrows right. his way in for the touchdown, and all of a sudden we are tied 6-6. Six to six. Back to action now with Rector. Handing off up the middle. That's Pruitt breaking tackles and spinning into the end zone for a Rebel touchdown. Cody Smith in motion. He'll take the pitch. Up the middle he goes. He gets a block. Now he's in the open. Cody Smith turns on the speed. He turns on the Jets. And Cody Smith is gone. Cody Smith, nothing too fancy about this one. Good vision. Turns on the Jets. 44 yards for the touchdown. Patrick Henry takes a 20-6 lead. Yeah, Beeson, the fastest player on this team. And... He went 62 yards for the touchdown, he untouched 62 yards for the touchdown, and just like that is now 28 to six. Here's the long pass, there's Rector to guess who. It was Ian Ray all the way down to the one yard line. It was a little touchdown run up the middle to Isaac Chafin. He'll toss it out to the speedster, and cutting back is Connor Beeson. Beeson down the left sideline. He's to the 30, the 20, and he is out of here. Once he gets through the line, you're not going to catch Mr. Beeson. Look at him go, 67 yards. He's looking back, making sure no one's catching him, and you don't have to worry about that. That's going to be all she wrote. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And Patrick Henry High School has defeated John S. Battle 42 to 6. Coming up next, we're going to take a look back at the game of the year in Southwest Virginia, the battle between Ridgeview and Union at Bullet Park that came down to the final play of the game. Our first Friday Night Rivals game in October was our first chance to catch up with the two-time Class 1 state runner-ups from Chilhowee. The Warriors came to Bristol to take on Virginia High from the spread, which makes them very dangerous, like right now. And Jonathan Gilly going over to the left side and crashing into the end zone. Gilly, again, just kind of like a carbon copy a couple plays ago, following his blockers, some nice blocks there. That was Jordan Williams. Jordan Williams. Here we go on the other side. Again, it's Gilly on the left side. He's got an escort as well. And there he goes, dancing his way back into the end zone again. And we saw this is how he scored on the, on the first. Touchdown right here, going to the far side of the field. Again, blockers out in front. Williams, again, has been blocking his butt off all night so far. And then Gilly does the rest. Nice cutback. Thomas looks like he is going to throw. He runs to the left, throws to the right. He's got a man out there, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Bearcats as number seven, Savion Fields, got behind the defense. Great job by Thomas buying time, and Xavier Fields... It's almost like the, the defense came up to stop Stevie Thomas running the ball. Thomas to the air. He's going to chuck it out to the right side. He's got a man out there. And is that a great catch or what? Oh, my goodness. Hunter Wright with a fingertip job. Wow. Hunter Wright laid out for that one. That's the play of the night so far. Really worth of a couple of looks. Thomas throws it up. Watch Wright just lay out for that one. What a catch by Hunter Wright. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I could look at that all night. How did he make that catch? Oh, look at this. That's got to be our boy Trav all over it. Oh, yeah. As Casey remarked, only three yards in offense in the second quarter. This time they start with Jordan Williams, the big fullback off the right side. He's got some running room. He's in the open now. He's down to the 20, the 10, and he's in for a touchdown for Jill Howie. Start the second half. This is what we saw in the first quarter, P.J., the running game, taking in out wide, following your blockers. Williams, though, it was Gilly in the first quarter. Williams here in the third, 57 yards. And we're going to have a final here as Chill Howie continues its march. They want to go back to the state finals. They beat Virginia High tonight 22-7. 
Ridgeview and Union are two of the top football programs in Southwest Virginia. On October 11th, an undefeated Ridgeview team went to Bullet Park to take on the Bears. Union jumped out to a big lead, but Ridgeview battled back, and the game wasn't decided until the final play of the game. Tonight, it's a battle for supremacy in Southwest Virginia. Casey gets it doesn't get much better than this. And here we go. Here come the Bears onto the field. the ball and this time it is Collier again left and touchdown Bears Mason Collier with the 15 yard touchdown the Toyota touchdown and Union is on the board they lead six to three offense on the move up the middle again it's Collier breaking tackles and finding the end zone the Bears are back on the board a 19-yard touchdown run by Mason Polier, his second of the game. Gibson. It's going to be Gibson to throw. The left-hander scrambling. He throws it up. There's a receiver out there. It's going to be a touchdown. Garant got all alone in the end zone, and he caught it. Phillips waiting for the snap. He is going to the air. He'll go over the middle. He's got a receiver who makes the catch at the goal line. They do not signal a touchdown yet. They better get up. They have not signaled they a touchdown. They have not signaled a touchdown. This clock is going to run out. Now well, it's a touchdown. Now they well, signal the touchdown. Third down and long. Phillips to the air. He's throwing it up for Hess. And Hess makes another great catch for a touchdown. And in motion. Sweet play. And there's a breakout. And there it goes. Down the sidelines. That's Polier. It is Polier. He pulled off the big play. And he's gone. Touchdown. 91-yard touchdown for Mason Polier. And now all that momentum is now back on the Union side. Hitting for the snap. He's going to throw it as far as he can. But now he may have gone over the line of scrimmage. The ball is up there and caught. It's caught by Ridgeview. And it was... That's it. That's your ball game. Oh, my goodness. Cut it out. And Union has won 32 to 26. All right, my ears are still ringing from that game at Bullet Park. The game of the year in Northeast Tennessee was Greenville at Elizabethan, one versus two in the state, and the game living up to the hype. We're going to relive the game and the Musket Bowl when Friday Night Rivals Rewind continues. October 18th was a date people in Greenville and Elizabethan had on their minds for a long time. At stake was a conference title and home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Elizabethan came close but were never able to get past Greenville in recent years. This year, not even a two touchdown deficit in the second half could keep the Cyclones from climbing the mountain and knocking off the Green Devils. This is the game of the year in Class 4, a one verse 2 in the state. So excited to be here, bringing it to you here on Friday Night Rivals. Can't wait for this one. These two teams have been the two best teams in Northeast Tennessee over the last five years, and now they get to play one verse 2 in the state. Look how far he jumps on this great Toyota replay here as Rollins throws a perfect pass, but just look at the elevation. That's huge. He's like six inches above the defender. This possession, watch Gudger, nice cutback right here up the middle. Arm tackle's not going to get it done against Greenville. 21-yard touchdown. Up the middle. That's Gudger on the first play. Gudger strikes for a touchdown. Mason Gudger. Nobody touched him. Great run by the Green Devils. And now they are in the lead, 13-7. Straight drop back. He's going to roll to his left this time. He has a receiver that waves at him who is open, and he's going to be complete. That's Hartley out there down the left sidelines, and Hartley with a huge gain. And he dives in. We're waiting to see if he went out of bounds. Touchdown. No, they called it a touchdown. Defense is watching Rollins. They forget about Hartley behind him. Watch, everybody has their eye on Rollins. They come up, and they forget about Hartley. A big mistake for Greenville. Elizabethan will capitalize and say, oh. we're right back in the game. <laughs> And Elizabethan's going to sneak it in. This time he is clearly over, but we're still waiting for the officials. And now they've signaled touchdown. They have signaled touchdown. Watch this. 
No one is out there with Maupin. Now he's all the way down to the 15-yard line. You're well within field goal range if you're Elizabeth in here. It's going to be a 34-yard field goal. Look at this view you're going to get of it here. We've got a great shot for you. You'll be able to tell. Good snap. The kick is up. The kick is good. It's good. Elizabeth then leads 24 to 21 with seven seconds to go. Oh, my. Have we seen number one knocked off? Prevent defense. This is it. Greg, Greg's going to toss it up. And it's going to be intercepted, and that is going to end the ball game. Elizabethan has knocked off Greenville. The final, 24 to 21. There's a new sheriff in town. The Elizabethan Cyclones are going to be the number one team in the state in Class 4A. Our Friday night rivals game of the year was the Musket Bowl. Our final one was the Musket Bowl between David Crockett and Daniel Boone. The only thing that wasn't good about the game was the weather. It rained the entire game, but that didn't stop these two rivals from playing an instant classic that came down to a trick play on the final play of the game. The Musket Bowl. This game has been played since 1971. Daniel Boone High School and David Crockett High School. So Blair's going to run to the right side, and he's got a hole. He cuts back left. Blair up the middle, and Blair will score, and Daniel Boone is up two touchdowns. He's the ground game. Yeah, you see here's the replay. Blair cuts back left, and there is nobody there in the middle of the field, untouched, 32 yards for the touchdown. Warner was hit behind the line of scrimmage here. If he would have kept the ball, it would have been a big loss, and Larkins makes the right read and gets across for the touchdown. Worley hands it to Blair, and there he goes up the middle. He's got one man to beat, and he will. Brennan Blair with a touchdown. Larkins from the shotgun, going to roll to the right. Big rush, little screen flare out to the left, and he finds his man. As Larkins finds him down the left sidelines. That's, and that's Brendan gonna, Reed. That is Reed, and that's going to be a touchdown. Larkins hands it to Reed. Reed off the left side, and he's in for the touchdown. We're one point away from being tied. Another handoff. That's Blair up the middle, just blasting by everyone. Now outrunning the secondary. Can he be caught? No. Touchdown, Daniel Boone. 55 yards for Brennan Blair. And what's more than a hat trick? A four touchdown night. Can Cade Larkins pull off a miracle? Larkins going over the middle. It's complete. That's Hackler. And it all comes down to this. Larkins fakes the handoff. Now it's a double He's pass. He's throw it. Back to, back to Larkins. Larkins has to. He's tackled. So Crockett runs a trick play, and Daniel Boone has won the musket bowl. Keep your eye on the ball. Prince Colley hands it off to Hackler. Hackler throws it to Kay Larkins. And there's he, one man keeping him out of the end zone. I think that was Lusk. And they are celebrating with the musket, and they're going to celebrate with another trophy as well, Casey. Yeah, they got the musket right now, and then we'll be giving them the Friday Night Rivals trophy. One of the best things about sports is the pure joy you get from players after they win a big game. We got that 10 straight weeks on Friday Night Rivals. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the best of the best celebrations. Each and every Friday night, the winning team on Friday Night Rivals got to hoist the Champions Trophy. Our own Olivia Bailey braved the elements and the celebration piles each and every week to hand out the trophy to the winning teams. You get the very first Tri-Cities Toyota Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy! Yeah. Champions Trophy. Yes, sir. And so we just want to congratulate you and give you our Friday night Toyota Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. Yeah. Oh. Favorite time of the night. We
we are here with Coach Palmer and his Patrick Henry Rebels, and we're proud to present to you the Toyota Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. Thank you very much. Woo! All right, go ahead. <laughs> Congratulations to Coach Robinson and the Chilhawee Warriors. Congratulations on your Toyota Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. Yeah. Yeah. I did to congratulate you and also give you our Toyota Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. Yeah. Trophy. Four weeks ago, one in four, you know, I couldn't go to the store without covering up. People, people want to know what's going on. We, we, we never thought we'd been here. That team right there, they were the talk of this season. We didn't, we weren't, we weren't nothing. We were hey, pushed to the side like it was nothing. I really can't say anything. I, I'm lost for words. What about them Blazers? <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at the top 10 plays from Friday Night Rivals. There are some really tough choices, but that's a good problem to have. Friday Night Rivals Rewind rolls on.